those who have wronged me. Folks will light the fuse. It's time for Mark Five. Let's get into Mark 5. You know the drill by now. Get it up on the screen uh, or open your Bible and let's follow along. So, verse 1. Then they went across the lake to the region of the Garanases. Definitely said that wrong. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. The man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. Okay, so a, a longer section there. I don't want to spend too long because it's a very long chapter this, but this is uh, a story where Jesus comes across a man who is said in the Bible to be demon-possessed. Uh, he would have been acting very strangely. He says that no one could uh, tie him up anymore, no one could pin him down, even with chains, that he would cry out, that he would hurt himself. Um, and the Bible doesn't say that he was possessed not by one demon or uh, sort of a spirit from the devil or we would talk about angels when we talk about God, God and his angels and in the Bible it often talks about devil and his demons but these sort of followers of the devil um, who when the devil was thrown out of heaven um, because he wanted to take over, wanted to be God he, he had followers that followed with him and the Bible talks about these as evil spirits or as demons and their job really as far as we can see is just to cause havoc in this world they just want to take over the goodness they want to pull people away from following God and his laws and they certainly wanted to distract from following um, Jesus but in this instance we read that this um, this is set of demons because it says that they said they are many they knew who Jesus was in fact they declared him to be Jesus son of the most high God and it's interesting how Jesus beginning his preaching and his teaching and he's trying to show people that the kingdom of God is coming that God has a plan and mission he's here to heal he's here to rescue people and that he himself is God in doing this and that while humans struggle to get to terms with this uh, the demons uh, the followers of the devil they recognize instantly who he is they cannot deny God they can't deny who Jesus is that he is God in human form and they beg Jesus to say please don't just destroy us or torture us send us into those pigs so we have somewhere to go so Jesus does um, and the Bible says that the pigs ran off and then they drowned um, and Jesus then asked to leave the area and you kind of understand why imagine you were those pig farmers you think oh my word what have you just done to my pig you just drowned my flock um, there was a lot of stuff in Jewish culture around the idea of pigs as well and pigs being unclean and, and pigs not being something that the Jewish people would eat and so there's something here about um, them being possessed and it's, uh, it just kind of adds this idea that there's something with pigs and Jewish people that they, they, they don't really like and they certainly wouldn't eat them and this is going back to the laws in the Old Testament. 
Um, and Jesus just drowns 2,000 of them. Not because I think he hated the pigs, but he almost, interestingly, almost showed a kind of a degree of mercy on these demons. Yes, they were taken out for man and they were drowned. Um, but the important thing in this story is that actually the man who was possessed was then saved. He was in his right mind. And that scared people. That amazing miracle that, that changed someone's life scared people as well. And, and they basically said, Jesus, please go away. We don't want to be here. And when the man tried to follow, Jesus said, no, actually, I need you to go and show people what's happened to you. I need you to be my messenger now. I need you to be my witness. I need you to tell people. It's what we call evangelism. Go and witness about the good things I've done. Show people the transformation in your lives. And it makes us think of today. When Jesus transforms our lives, do we go to the people around us? Do we show people the change God has made in our lives so they can understand that, that God is real and that Jesus is at work? Moving on, verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jarius came and when he saw Jesus, he fell on his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. So another long passage and uh, two what seems like different stories here, but actually they are hugely interlinked. Um, this is an example again of miraculous healing, but it's healing that comes about because of the faith of the people who asked Jesus for it. Um, so first of all, he's approached by a synagogue leader uh, called Jairus. Now that's quite a significant thing because in the synagogue leaders and the religious leaders, they weren't very happy with Jesus. They were starting the, to kind of talk about how they could get rid of him, how they could unseat him from his, um, the power that he'd been given by the crowds who came to listen to him. But one synagogue leader said, well, do you know what? My daughter is dying and I believe this man can help her. So he comes and he falls at his feet and he pleads with him. It's almost like he's saying, um, I know that I'm the enemy now. I know that I'm a part of a group of people who, who really are against you, but please, will you please, will you see beyond that and help them? And Jesus' response is, yeah, let's go. Show me where she is instantly. Um, and on the way, you have this story of a woman who pushes through in the crowd. And she doesn't throw herself at the feet of Jesus. She doesn't even um, try and convince him. She just thinks, if I can just get in amongst the crowd and just touch his cloak, just the edge of his cloak, that's all I need to do, then I will be healed. Because I believe that this man is from God, that this man is God, and that he can heal me if I just believe and touch him. And that's what happened. And um, she was suffering from something which doctors couldn't solve, suffering from something which, um, 
you know, it, it's not nice and it's hard for us guys to understand the, the sort of thing this woman will be going through. Um, but girls, I'm sure some of you really get this and um, her faith and belief was what healed her. And it wasn't a passive thing. It wasn't like Jesus had no idea because the, the Bible says that he felt power go from him. It's almost like he's saying every time a miracle like this happens, every time we, uh, God acts um, because of our faith, it is an active um, thing. It's not passive. It's not just something that happens because we've caused it. It's always from God. But it was her faith that allowed it to happen. It was her faith that almost unlocked it. And Jesus turned around to say, you know, who was it? Now, again, he maybe didn't need to do that. But he wanted almost her to come forward and show the crowd, look what this woman has done in faith. Because he says to her, when she eventually owns up and says, it was me, he says to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And he wants everyone to know that I'm, I'm doing these miraculous things, but your faith is what's going to do this. Your faith, like a mustard seed, like the kingdom of God, which is going to explode everywhere, um, is what's going to unlock all these miracles and do these signs and wonders. And then the story carries on and he gets to the house. And um, him and Jarius, the synagogue leader, are told, leave it, she's dead. Your, your daughter's dead, I'm really sorry, she's gone. And Jesus is like, no, don't worry about that. Just believe, just have faith, trust in what I can do. Um, and they kind of laugh at this, really. They think, you know, you've told us to shut up and stop crying, but she's dead, what are you gonna do? And he's like, she's not dead, she's just asleep. It's not permanent what's happened to her. It's temporary. Death is not something which is going to be permanent anymore with Jesus. And they don't even understand. They've not seen the cross. We get to look back and see the cross and we'll get there in Mark. But Jesus is saying, you don't understand. Death is no longer the end. And so he goes in with the mother and the father and he takes in his three kind of dudes, his amigos, his bezzy mates really out of the disciples. Peter, James and John. These are kind of like his disciples. He loved them all. But these are the three that he kind of took special places like this. Um, and he speaks to the girl and he says, get up. And there's just two words in 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 the uh, in the language there in in what is probably Hebrew, and you think that's a whole sentence in English, and it just shows the depth of the language that that they spoke, and why sometimes interpreting the Bible can be so difficult when we almost try to apply so many words to it. But he speaks to her, and it says immediately she got up and she starts walking around, and she was healed, she was alive again, and they were completely amazed. Why did Jesus tell them not to tell anyone about it? It's an odd one, this, because part of this you think, you know, he's told the man who he uh, healed of possession, go and tell everybody. He, he showed the crowd, look what the faith has done for this this girl. Um, I think to a degree, it's almost like he's he's kind of saving this 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 um, the the resurrection thing to come. You know, it's not that it shouldn't have happened because he chose to do it. Um, but it's almost like he's saying, yeah, you think this is good? Just you wait, just you hold on. And he knows that there's gonna be his death and his resurrection. And you can imagine after that, when people are doubting that, that this family will come forward and go, no, 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 we believe it. Cause this happened to our daughter. This happened to us, do you see that? And it's almost like Jesus is saying, it's not right the time yet. It's not the right time. And also I wonder as well, if I'm being honest, as a youth worker, is he just thinking about the daughter here? He doesn't want this 12 year old girl to be hounded and, and have all these different people wanting to come and see him and and you know all the doctors at the time and then the synagogue leaders who just want to come and poke her and and make her almost um uh, the center of of a conspiracy oh it's a big lie all oh, this isn't real could you imagine what that would do to a 12 year old girl imagine what that would do to this family so it's almost like he wanted to protect them as well um i i don't know that for a fact i'm reading between the lines here in scripture i'm just wondering is jesus's love and compassion greater than just making a great name for himself. He already is on the, 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 the path of making God known in the miracles. And I wonder in this moment, he's saying, do you know what? God has done something great here. And that is for you and your daughter. And we don't need to spread that more. You don't need to become a media circus, so to speak, of whatever that time was around this girl. And it's love and compassion that's shown there for her. Okay, guys, that is it. I hope you're kind of getting on with this. I am seeing some views starting to tick up. Um, please do let me know because it's really helpful to know if this is good, if this is bad, whatever. But enjoy. Bye.